small, it's simple, but it's, it's profound and I think it hits to the heart of, of what we're going through as, as a people, as a nation, and in, this, in these days. <clears throat> If you could stand, Lord, we thank you and we love you, Lord God. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that your spirit would abide in this house, that you would minister to your people, that I would diminish and you would increase, Lord God, that you would use this vessel, Lord God, to have your way in this house. Lift us, cure us, heal us, Lord God. Touch our hearts and our souls, our minds, Lord God, in the way that is representative of you, to bring you the glory, Lord God. Bless those that are heavy laden, those that are those that are in need of you Lord God I pray that that this word would nourish them and would carry them through to the next week in Jesus name we pray amen <clears throat> think about Corinthians chapter 13 first Corinthians 13 talks about love and the the three the three best things the scripture says there's three things that we should have faith hope and the best one love and it says here though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not love I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal and though I have the gift of prophecy understanding all mysteries and knowledge and all faith I have and to remove mountains but have not love I am nothing and though I bestow all my goods to, to feed the poor and, and to give to my body to burn, to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. And as mothers, we are, we are very loving. I, I thank God that he blessed us with that nurturing, that, that love, that attention that we naturally give to our children. I would say that it, even if you're not ready, even if you're the youngest mom, I was 17 when I was pregnant. And the thought came to kill the child. You're young, you haven't started school. Why not? But it's troublesome. But once they start fluttering inside of you, you're done. You're done. You are sold. You are crazy for this little thing, this little thing that's bubbling inside of you, and, and you don't even know him. I went to the store. I went to Walmart. I had no money, so I had three, four little bucks, bought me a little cheap outfit, baby outfit, and that's what I held. And I knew I was going to break my parents' heart, but I did it anyway. I, you go through with it. You pay your consequences. You love your children no matter what. Now, loving, loving comes. But I, the message today is not just, just the way we love our children unconditionally. We must love one another unconditionally. It's easy to love the child that's been in your womb for nine months. You felt it, you, you care for it when it's sick, when your heart aches when they're, they're, they have a fever. And you can't fix it, you can't, and you pray, Lord, please take their pain away and give it to me. And you can't, but do we have that love towards one another? And that's the love that God is looking for. The Bible says that God is love. The love that you have for others, it's Him. It's Him in you producing that and we're gonna go very simply through the whole verse it says love first Corinthians 13 verse 4 which is gonna go down the line love is patient right there God just <laughs> Shine did have a wonderful letter. It she melted my heart. And then she says, and she yells at me. And I do. And it's not just her. I yell. I tell as a children's church, I yell at all of them. And I've had to apologize to them and say, I'm so sorry. 
and God had to you know when you when you catch a fish and you got to reel it back in you got to you got to be reeled back in cuz you're going too far out God did that to me a couple weeks ago with this scripture be patient love is patient the greatest way that you can show anyone that you love them is to be patient even at a grocery store I've seen I've seen older people go to fries in the foothills and you're being rude and being being impatient you show that you don't care and that's that's it and it's so simple and you think I got to give him a hug I got to give him a kiss I got to give him a present no it's free be patient the next one says love is kind your heart your heart in you kindness kindness equals respect if I am not kind to you regardless of how you treat me I'm dishonoring God is that simple regardless of your color regardless of your religion regardless of your culture if I don't if I am not kind to you I'm disrespecting God because he created you and that's something it's simple it's short be kind be patient love is patient love is kind love does not envy human nature says that that when you may say when do I get mine when is it my turn you may be at a prayer meeting or someone gets healed and you wonder, well, how come she got, how come she got blessed, Lord, and she's only been in church like two months and she's not even doing all that great, but she got saved and, and you know, you healed her from cancer and here I am, I've been so faithful to you for all these years and you haven't blessed me. Love does not envy. Love is happy for someone else's blessing. Amen. Always. And the minute you feel it rising up in you that you're like jealous, nip it right there and that and repent and tell Lord, Lord, give me that joy that I should feel for my brother. Because it shows you when I see God being good to brother Chris, when I see how far he's brought him through. Amen. It amazes me and I'm happy and it melts my heart to know that is my God that is working in his life and he will do it for mine. He will do it for you. It may not be when you want it. It may not be. It never is because love is patient. It's not going to be when you want it, when you snap your fingers, is when God says this is the time. You're ready. I think about certain things I've asked God for that I didn't get when I asked for them. And now I look back and I'm like, Lord, thank you. You didn't do it. My head would be bigger than that balloon. He knows why he does things and we must learn to trust God and know that he's doing everything he can for our best in his time. Not yours, not my schedule, but his. Love, love does not boast. Boasting means to speak with exaggeration and to exercise pride, especially of oneself. Even in your testimonies, even when you testify, be careful when you do it, not to do it in a way that you're boasting so much. It's always good to boast on God, but on you and your testimony and how great you are to the point where you hurt someone else, be careful. Don't do it. You're, God is love, and he is here. We are here to show who he is. We are his image. When they see you, when I see Sister, Sister Felicia and Sister Norma, I should see Christ. If I see her bragging to the point that she makes me sick to my stomach, even though it's her testimony, does that show me Christ? Does that make me want to be a Christian? So listen to yourself. Examine yourself. And, it's, and saints, it's not easy when God tells you this, when he shows you this about yourself. But accept it. 
admit it and change. The next one says, love is not arrogant. Now, arrogance is, is not boasting. It's more underneath the skin. It's more of an attitude. You just, it's silent. It's silent, but you feel it, and you know it, and you can smell it. And it makes people sick. It makes people want to vomit when they hear your arrogance, when they feel it in the atmosphere. And you have to remain humble. You have to ask God to take that away from you, to keep us humble at all times. No matter how much God blesses you and what he does for you, it is not, and I've said it before, it is not our looks, it's not how great we are, it's not how... The kindness that you see is... Is, I can't even take credit for it. God has changed us. He's the one that's made that change in us. Thank you, brother. He's done that for us. So don't be arrogant. Don't be arrogant in the way, in the way you portray yourself. Don't ever see yourself so big and so great. There's a fine line, and that's how you know when, when, there's, when you have matured. I love it when God shows me. I think... And I'm going to tell on myself, there's certain things I say, oh, I'm good. I, I got this. I've passed this test or whatever's going on in my life. And then God shows me a couple months later and you realize I'm such a fool. I don't have it. I don't have it all together and I was wrong. And just always keep that, remember, Love is patient, kind, it is not proud, and it is not arrogant. It does not boast. The, other, the next one is, love is not rude. And out in the world, hey, you throw the bird, you cut them off in the street, you tell them off, it's obvious it's rude. But in church, we're more slick. We're more slick about our rudeness. We, a good example of, of, of someone being rude, talking all the time and not listening. You just come in and you just unload your story. And I know you've had a lot, you've gone through a lot, but don't be rude. Give others a chance to speak. There's a balance, you cannot be too outspoken, you cannot be the person that never talks, but that's one of the ways that we are more slick about our rudeness. I've seen it in church, we had a, a women's meeting, December-ish, November of last year, and there was a speaker that came in, and the lady gave a beautiful message, as soon as as soon as she, she tried to sit down, she tried. Man, those ladies ran after her, and they cornered her, so the other two kind of went away, but one of them stayed the whole time. The speaker didn't even have a chance to eat. She just took over her whole time, and it's very rude. You have to give people the time. You have to give, you have to learn to share. Um, and just keep that in, in, in your mind. It's, it shows that you care. Yes, do we, do we have a long story that we want to share and we want some advice from someone? Yeah. But learn to seek that advice from God. Understand that we are all flawed vessels. Even in our greatest day and our most holy anointed, just walked out of a two week fast with no water and no food, even levitating, we're still flawed. Do you understand that? We are still flawed. My advice is going to come from my experiences, from the environment I've been. It's great, and God will surround you with great people. But your best advice comes from God. Amen. Spend your time alone. Learn to seek Him. Learn to hear from Him correct you. There's sometimes that 
if my husband corrects me, it hurts, but, and he doesn't do it often, but when you know it's God, it's, I may get angry or bitter or whatever, you know, have attitude that whole day. Because he, how dare he? But he was right. But I still, how dare he? <laughs> but when God does it, and if you give him that chance, you won't have to let others <laughs> tell you that. Uh, and you will accept it better. Number seven, love does not insist on its own way. That is selfishness. Insisting on our own way when we... When we get impatient, when people frustrate us because they're not doing, and we see it a lot among mothers. My children, my goodness, they frustrate me to the 10th degree. And I know I can hear, I, I didn't hear any amens. What's up with that? Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Don't they? They just, I was telling Joshua this morning, look, if you're going to walk slow, fine. But wake up earlier. Don't wake up at the last minute and walk slow. One or the other. Um, little things, and, and, and they think of us, and I know sometimes Josh sees me and he's probably thinking, this evil witch. And he doesn't say it, but I'm trying to help him out. I'm trying to help him out. I do it out of frustration, but love, frustrated love. <laughs> and just and and I do and that's what God was dealing with me because I I can't I would come home and I and I would be frustrated and and I was getting it out on the kids and it's not their fault their kids they're gonna be kids so that's when God was dealing with me so I'm just kind of passing on the whooping I got okay <laughs> so <laughs> love is not irritable or resentful um, and that kind of covered, um, love does not insist, insist on its way. I do have something else to say about that. Have you noticed how we know the Lord, we know him when he saves us, and we love him for it. I mean, you meet him in, as a savior. Then you get sick. Then he delivers you from that, and now you know him as your healer. And then you lose your job, and you see him as your provider. And you get to see every level that he, that he is, or every facet, manifestation of him. And those are all awesome. <clears throat> but love and maturity in Christ will take you to the point where you see him as your Lord. And think about that, your Lord, when it's no longer your will, when it's his. When you really want something so bad and God said no. You want it bad and God said no. And you stop begging for his permissive will. And you just say, okay, Lord, you said no, it's no. And you move on. When you get to that point, you're reaching maturity in Christ. You're, rich, you're reaching a place where he can trust you with more. Because you're no longer a child. If I tell Iana or any of these babies no, they have a fit. And they're immature. But if I tell Brother Peters no, no Brother Peters, he's not going to, I hope he's not going to roll on the floor and kick his feet. I hope he doesn't. I, and I know he won't. But that's maturity. And it's the same thing with Christ. When you realize that he is your Lord, he rules your life, your day, day, every minute of the day. When, when I remember, I'm going to tell on Isaac, he's not here. I remember driving down the street right here, 3rd, 4th Street, and I was at a stop sign. And the thought came, go to J Isaac's school. That's not what my plan was for that day. My day was planned and I was going to run my errands. But I went to his school. I found out that boy had been ditching for like a month straight, pretty much. In and out, out of school, ditching here and there. And I thought, I mean, he, he was in big trouble. But the other thing is that love, that God 
when you're obedient to God. He tells you. He tells you. He'll tell you about your children. He'll tell you about your spouses. He'll tell you about people. And, and it's not that God's just telling you their business. He's just warning you, I guess. It would be. And we caught it before. If I hadn't. If God didn't love my son enough. I wouldn't have known for another two years. till so they called me from school and said he's dropped out. But, but being obedient to God, letting him be the Lord of your life is not easy. And we say it, yes, you are, you are my Lord. Not until you, he tests you. Not until he tests you and then you really have to let go and, have, and let him have his way. Then you'll know if you truly are mature. The next one says, <clears throat> love does not rejoice over wrongdoing. When your children are bad or whoever it is or someone here at church and you've sinned, we don't rejoice over it and we don't celebrate it. We don't honor it and take your time to correct it. It's, it's not easy. Do it in love and in kindness and sometimes I have been harsh and I've had to go back to our little children and tell them I'm sorry but I but I, I was wrong the way I said it but I was right with what I said and I still expect this and this and this and this from you guys and and I think they're learning I think they're 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 seeing it and they're understanding um, rejoicing I'm sorry wrongdoing if you if you do something wrong, there's also a, a section, don't rejoice in wrongdoing. If you, it's easy for me to bust on one of the children or, or see you mess up and tell you and correct you. But sometimes you're not always in front of us. Sometimes it's just you alone at home or at work and no one is there to see you misbehave. But God is watching you. He sees you. And you get away with it. And the foolish thing is to think that you are getting away with it. You're not. And the more you do that, repent right away. Because the more you do it, the more of a pattern you're making in your life and your subconscious is saying, hey, no big deal. Eh, he, I didn't, no one busted me. No one saw it. Lord didn't say nothing. You know the word of God. God doesn't have to tell you do not steal or you know what, whatever it is whatever your weakness is that no one saw the more don't even let yourself get away with it okay don't wait for God to wake up pastor in the middle of the night and tell him to come tell you and pull you into a meeting fix it yourself before God. Um, but love rejoices with in the in the truth. To know the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth, the way, and the light. When God shows us the truth about ourselves or even even you ministering to someone and, and you get to see their life and you and you You'll get to meet so many people and you see a pattern in their life. This happens and then, bam, then they fall. This is, goes well and then, bam, they fall again. But we've prayed, we've fasted. What's the problem? And you don't know. But one day God reveals it to you. If God reveals something to you and between you and that person, rejoice in the fact that he's given you the truth and he's opened up a door for you to 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 help a, a brother or sister bring them up celebrate that truth and don't break that covenant don't break that that truth I can you imagine I think about prophets someone God is telling you so much stuff about everyone in there and if you just went and told everyone's business you you have to be at a point where you can be trusted and learn to, to keep that trust. 
with God and with whoever God has opened a door to be close to. In ministry, I mean. Okay, please don't misinterpret. In ministry. All right. Love bears all things. And this one, this one, developing our love life in our soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Bringing all those things, and that's a not an easy task. It's easy for me to hug you and give you a kiss and send you away. But to control my emotions, the way I think about you or what I think or how I feel about you, you've got to learn to learn to learn those things. And it says love bears all things. I I don't like to feel stressed or anxious. Sometimes the news alone, just the news makes me feel that way. So I rather not watch it. Now, if you are feeling that way, I'm not saying hide and just don't or ignore it. That's not the point. The point is that no matter how tough things are or how bad it gets in your personal life, in your finances, in your marriage, in your ministry, it doesn't matter. If 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 the devil is tormenting you with thoughts of inadequacy or frustration of of and he does he does to me I don't know if he does it to you in different things if he's tormenting you with that you drop it you drop it and you get to the cross if God could bear the stripes the beating the shame you can bear your little problem. You're going to make it. So give it back to him and tell him. He will build you up. He will, he will fix that thing that's going in the wrong direction in your soul. I think of it as the ship and, and, the, and the, what is this thing called? <laughs> the, uh, the sail may be taking you the other way. Get back to the cross, and God will fix that sail, and you'll go straight. You'll start feeling it better. You'll feel better. Love believes all things. And this is wah, wah, wah. Don't be negative. Don't be negative. As, as a creature of Christ, you have to be full of hope, full of faith, full of joy. No matter what the circumstance, how it looks, God never needed perfect circumstances to make something great. He never did. Actually, the more distraught and discombobulated, the better it is for him. The greater his glory. Be careful of how you speak to others. Especially our children. If, if, if they believe they did something, and, and encourage them. Bless them, lift them up, show them, tell them, I believe in you. You did it. You did a great job. Maybe it wasn't that great, but blow it up. Make it something great. And we're good as mothers doing that for our children. They bring these little drawings and, yay, let's put it in the fridge. But you know it's not, it's not a Picasso. But it is to you. And in the same way that we are with our children, we must be with one another. Keep that hope. If your brother or sister has a dream, don't kill it just because of the circumstance that you see and you, you think is not going to happen. It is amazing for someone. Think about this. The man or the woman who has a dream and sees a vision, sees a building, sees people, sees foundations, sees lives changing, nah, you're not going to do it, nah, and walks away. And then there's those others that believe what you saw and stayed with you through it. Who is closer to you when the actual dream happens? The one that was with you, the one that believed with you, the one that hoped with you, the one that prayed with you. Keep that. Keep nurture those people. Don't be a dream quencher. Lift up those around you, even if it's not your dream, and it doesn't matter. Even if it doesn't happen, to know that I have someone, to know that I have a friend who believes with me, who prays with me, it's worth more than a million dollars. 
And then love hopes all things. You must train your mind, your will, and your emotions to have hope in all things. Hope is good for every, hope is, hope for good, sorry. Hoping, hoping for the best for everyone, regardless of the situation. If someone says they have stage four cancer and they have hope that they're going to be healed, don't be the one to say, but sis, you know that you know, Ebola is coming and there's more diseases coming and don't. Just, if you have nothing nice to say, just don't say nothing. And let her be with her hope. But encourage others to have hope. Remember that after all this is over, I think about we pray for faith. We want faith. I want faith to lay hands on people and people be healed. People just want to be saved. But even that's going to be done with. God gives each and every one of us a measure of faith. Hope. But the best one, the one that will never go, the one that will always be, the one where you deposit in heaven directly, every day, every second, is love. And how you love one another, not just your biological children, but your spiritual brothers and sisters, you're making deposits in eternity. Don't forget that. When you are frustrated, when you think they're not doing right, or when you think, who are we? Who are you? That people have to live up to your expectations. We're nobody. Let people be people. Let them live. Let them make their mistakes. Encourage them. Love them. Lift them up. And let God do the correcting. If he, tell, if he God gave you a rod, then use it in love and kindness. I love you guys.